Good morning YouTube, it is 10 a.m. in the great state of Texas and welcome back to another Salty Texas production. What we got here today, got these silicone molds that I've had in the garage for about six, seven, eight, maybe even a year. And I decided, you know what, we're going to get away from the scrap pine board and I am going to make like a cube kaleidoscope type of bowl using the silicone mold and six different resin colors. I saw another woodworker, I think it was Pole Barn Productions, do this, did something similar recently. I'm I did this in May, so sometime around there. He did like a kaleidoscope or like a stained glass type of bowl, and I really loved it. So that's who inspired me to do this. I'm sure some other woodworkers have done it, but that's the video that I saw that kind of inspired me to do this. And I've never done anything like this before, so essentially all I'm doing is pouring uh, East Coast resin into the molds, mixing it up, putting some uh, alcohol dye in them, and making just basically just cubes. I'm going to put this in the pressure pot for four and a half hours, see what kind of results we get. I'm really happy with how this turned out initially. I took it out of the pressure pot. However, I thought they would just pop out, so I had a little bit of trouble. This is me actually trying to get them out of the mold. And what I didn't realize was it's exactly like ice. Cause I believe these are like ice trays that I'm using here. And I would I just wanted them to pop out, but I literally had to crack the resin because it, it did harden up, obviously. And after I figured out how to do that, this is what they looked like once I took them out of the actual mold itself. Cool little cube little things. And I wasn't worried that some of them were a little oblong, some of them weren't even. But I really liked how these turned out. Now, you do get like a swirling type of effect, which I honestly kind of really liked. However, probably in the next one that I do, I'm probably going to mix up the resin in smaller batches and then pour it into the mold to get a little bit better effect or just do something completely different. But uh, I'll be honest, I really like how this bowl ends up turning out. So all I did was initially just took a dollar store mold. Filled everything else up with this clear resin. That was my initial plan. I didn't anticipate making this thing entirely this big. However, it just kind of, you know, when you're pouring resin and you're not exactly sure how much to use, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to let this resin go to waste. And ended up filling that whole bad mamma jamma all the way up. And this was the after effect. And I really like the bottom. I really like how that turned out. But there was so much negative space of just clear resin. I was like, ah, this isn't going to turn out how I imagined. But the bottom is going to look really cool. This is iteration one. We're going to come back and we're going to do a different project using this similar technique. So don't worry. It's going to get better because anytime I use a new technique, typically I have to do it a couple of times before we really master how to do it. And even then, I don't really master it. I just get kind of better with each iteration. So the molding turned out really well. No gaps in the resin. Really liked how it did. Crystal clear using East Coast resin, like I said before, looking really good initially. So, getting the faceplate on, I am using new screws. If you guys are probably watching this in November or December, I ended up doing this uh, sometime in May. I can't really remember, but this is actually one o'clock in the morning when we actually doing the turn down on the lathe. So we got everything bolted up, got everything nice and neat. Now we got everything on to the headstock. A little vibration initially, and you saw there, I was going to use the uh, round, not the round, but the, uh, the, I'm actually using the round carbide tool here. I was going to use the bowl gouge to get off that superficial layer, and initially I was getting a lot of shards of glass, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's not so much my technique as much as it is that chisel hit, hitting the epoxy. So immediately once I started to get that, I switched over to the round carbide tool, which was a really smart move on my part, and I rarely make smart moves. Uh, and I just got a better result with it. I was getting a lot of better ribbons off, as you can see there. You can see my head also. And was just able to get that nice and, nice and round uh, blank like we typically like to do. However, this project gave me a lot of problems. This is a shard of epoxy that was on the lip of the bowl. You didn't see it initially because the video is sped up. But this thing came and I felt it hit me in the face on my face shield and then ricocheted and hit me in the chest. And I felt that sharp end like hit my chest and I, I thought I had been cut. I was like, oh my God. So I can't say this enough. There's gonna be another catastrophic failure, of course, later on in the video. Wear your safety equipment. That face shield literally saved my bacon two times in that video and that was the first time. So a little bit later in the project, we're still trying to get everything rounded down after that initial hit in the face with that shard of glass. You can see I'm getting really good ribbons off right here. 
everything is going really well I like the way this is forming up really good ribbons not a whole lot of problems after that first initial dent so I'm, I'm pretty happy to where we are up into this point so now we're going to turn it over make a mortise and i didn't use a lot of pine board in this project which i forgot which i'll go over a little bit later in the commentary got the mortise built square carbide tool had a little bit of chatter uh on the initial rim of the bowl itself you can see right there you can see all those chatter marks from the round from the gouging bowl uh gouging chisel but real easy came back hit it with a round carbide tool didn't have a lot of problems with it initially after that so now we're just easing up that top lip of the bowl trying not to get any more shards of glass there's me wearing my face shield and i do wear both face glasses and a shield and i need i do need to get a new covering for i want to get a new shield i had ordered one but it hasn't came in yet so here we are i usually what i do with the waste block where the face plate goes i usually chisel that off but I did this late at night, and I'm already making enough racket in the garage. I really didn't want to draw enough attention to myself. I actually did this during a rainstorm, so you might be able to hear the rain in the background. So West Texas storm in the middle of spring. Again, I did this in May, and I didn't want to make any more racket than I absolutely had to. So I just decided, hey, it's just pine. And that pine, you know, melted away really fast. You can see here... Uh, in the beginning of the video you knew that I had that piece of pine on the top and didn't have a lot of problems but once we got deep enough to where it was mostly epoxy started having some issues with the uh, bowl gouge itself I was getting a lot of chatter a lot of resistance on the lathe and round carbide tools in my opinion are just better when you're having those kinds of issues so I switch a lot between the round and the bowl gouge using the the actual gouge itself for a lot of more of the pine and the wood portions of it and then coming back and hitting it with a round carbide tool to kind of like really just even a lot of everything out getting a lot better material and then coming back intermittently with a square carbide tool to just you know clean up a lot of the work area here and the bowl gouging actually took a lot longer than i anticipated because it was mostly epoxy usually when i have wood it goes off a lot it is a lot easier to work with but the gouging portion of it with the round carbide tool obviously took a lot longer than I anticipated because you have so much material to work off and you don't want to get too aggressive with it because that's when you run into a lot of problems so here we are a little bit different angle basically doing the same thing you can see there I'm wearing my face shield wearing my glasses and a respirator had the had the garage barely open so there's a lot of dust and particles flying off uh, in the garage around this time so getting the lip of the bowl a little bit thicker than we usually go again you're gonna see here that I'm gonna get literally this chisel is going to explode on me and I wish I would have filmed it but I guess what I ended up doing was when I was gouging out the the bottom of the bowl it caught on a lip of something and basically just shattered my uh, round carbide chisel which you, what you'll see the chisel here in a minute but unfortunately you know i don't film the entire project like once i you know got enough material off i might stop it and then come back and then just keep going over and over because it does take a while so i don't want you guys to be like oh my god he's, he's never going to do anything different so to make the video a little bit more entertaining i don't film the entire process i might do that in a later project but uh for this purpose you're not going to see the actual explosion of the carbide tool but it did scare the poo poo out of me so all we're doing here is just basically cleaning up the bottom getting rid of that going to a nice depth that we like you saw me clean up the side lip of the bowl there the edges are a little bit longer than I typically will do or thicker than I usually go for but just you know using and this is where I, I did something like this and then the carbide tool I think I went a little too high I should have did a little bit more shallow cut on the bottom of it but uh, before we get to that part then I was cleaning up the side of the bowl I didn't use the the, the flat skew a lot because I did a previous project where it scuffed up the epoxy. I guess it's just not sharp or I did it at a wrong angle. So I'm coming back and hitting it with a round carbide tool, trying to get everything nice and flush and flat. I didn't want to leave those scuff marks because they're kind of impossible to sand out. However, when you're up to this point and you're still trying to, you know, flatten the abs the absolute flat portion of the outside of the bowl with a round carbide tool, typically I get a little bit more uh, antsy about the lip breaking potentially. So this is the carbide tool when I was actually gouging out the inner portion which you didn't see. So it basically 
the that brown carbide, the actual head of it is heavy as hell. It hit me directly in the face, and thank God I was wearing my face shield because if I wasn't, that thing would have absolutely punctured and like screwed up my face. Like that, that's a projectile basically coming back and hitting you in the dome. So thank God, wear your face shield, people. So initially, I didn't think I was going to be able to finish, but then I remembered I had these smaller carbide tools. And by this time, the project is basically almost done. So I just had to do a little bit of cleanup work using the round small carbide tool and cut down everything nice and neat. Got the shape of that I wanted. And I'm thinking I almost got hit in the beginning of the video with a sharp piece of epoxy. I had a chisel explode on me that hit me in the face. And I'm like, okay, we're done. This It looks good enough. And not good enough, but it, it is done. But I just didn't want to impress my luck. There's the broken carbide tool that absolutely shattered. There's the bottom of the bowl, got really good ribbons off. Really happy with the way this actual turned out. Again, did this real late in the morning. It was like one o'clock by the time we got done. So once we got everything kind of cleaned up on the workbench, now I'm just coming back, hitting it with the 340 grit, and then we're gonna hit it all the way up to the 1500, and then come back and hit it with the micro mesh like we typically will do with these bowls. And again, a little bit of my shoulder and did a lot of wet sanding which really makes the epoxy pop and again i'm going to come back and do a different project using the similar technique but i'm going to put a lot more color into it so i really hope that you guys get that whole effect with it it looks absolutely amazing once we hit it with that wood polish that i like to use a lot you can see a little bit of the wood in there which i think i like that it adds a little accent piece to it so it doesn't completely take away from the aesthetic of the bowl but here we are polishing everything up nicely got everything taken care of and now we're just you know almost there toward the end and by this time I'm really happy with everything I'm glad I just didn't get injured catastrophically because essentially that's what was going to happen to me so here we are you can see there you can see the the swirling effect in the epoxy a little bit that wood kind of takes away from a, a little bit but I I actually like the way that turned out so I'm, I'm not too disappointed with that so turning it you can see all those different colors kind of looks like the affinity stone gauntlet a little bit i think i need to do a project like that a little bit later and then since the sun is not shining obviously at one o'clock in the morning just one more outro spinning it up making everything nice and neat getting the different angles make sure that polish is on there real nice and thick and again you guys are probably watching this in november so i hope everybody's fall is going well and here it is this is what it looks like when it's all nice and done you can see those blocks, especially on the bottom, you can see that effect a lot better than you can on the actual layers itself. But really like this, I'm going to come back and do a different project like this a little bit later on using the same technique. But wow, almost died during this, literally almost died. So wear your safety equipment. I can't stress that enough. So hope you liked it. Hope you got something out of it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next project. Peace. Okay, so the project is done. Uh, it looks really cool. It looks really cool. It's actually one o'clock in the morning, uh, Sunday, sometime in May. I don't know. But uh, I am really happy the way this turned out, actually. It, this bowl nearly killed me. It, it fucking almost decapitated me a couple of times. But... Man, it. I'm going to do a different bowl like this in the future. and It's going to be a lot cooler with a lot more colors uh, now that I kind of know how to know, to know how to do it. However, I need to order a new uh, set of chisels because, wow, this, this nearly fucking killed me. Uh, so, I don't know what the hell happened, and I'm sure I went over it in the commentary. But this is what a broke bowl gouge looks like. Just, I guess I was doing this with her and it just completely shattered. Just, I, I am so grateful I had my, my uh, face shield on. Because this literally came and hit me right here. Like, and then this early on. I mean, right to the face. I mean, I cannot, I can't say that enough. Wear your safety equipment. And I used to be one of these guys when I first got into this, like, oh, I don't need to wear safety equipment. I can't imagine the scar or the gouge in my face if this or this 
would have came flying at me off off the lathe. Like this is super fucking dangerous. So FYI, wear your safety gear. So I hope you guys enjoyed the project. You guys are probably watching this in November or December sometime. Uh, like I said, it's May 2021. Hope you guys liked it. And we're going to do another bowl like this. And it's going to be a lot cooler, a lot better. So I'll catch you guys in the next project. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next project. Bye.